In this Clash of Clans video, we are going to be looking at choosing the right army for the right base. So we're going to give you a lot of tips and tricks on some of the things you might look for in choosing your kill squad, your actual attack for the base itself. We are literally just going to be scratching the surface for this, guys. It is an incredibly in-depth topic, and if you could crack this for every base, you would be a top Clash of Clans player. But this is where a lot of the skill comes in, a lot of the excitement, planning the attacks, what will actually work, the tiny little critiques within a plan can really make the difference. But we're going to give you as many tips as we can in this video, so without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty guys, we are starting with the Lava Loon attack strategy. The reason I chose this is I believe it's one of the best strategies across a number of Town Hall levels. There's a number of different entries into it, and we'll show you a few different ones here and describe why I feel one was used instead of another. It's not that it is the only way, but you want to try and narrow down the way that makes it easiest. Towards the end of the video, we will also look at the Pekka Bow Bat, why the bats are used, why the bats are not used, and try and give you a little bit of help in terms of that. So for this first attack, we have a traditional kill squad coming in. If we pause here for a second, I'll explain some of the reasons I believe the attacker used this. One, we had an air defense on the side here. Yes, we could have took that out. Let's see if we wanted to use a queen charge with the queen, but we'd have had to make sure the funnel was set here in order to then drive the queen into the base. That is because you can see this multi-inferno hitting the queen on the edge of the base. That means it could attack healers on the side here. We'd have to make sure we came in at an angle where we could keep the healers out of range. And again, if we came in at this exact angle, for example, we'd have to cut the funnel here first, which can be a little bit trickier to do. That's where the golem came in with the wizards, but also the golem then redirected to protect the wrecker because all we need to do is cut off this area of the base look and then we've got this beautiful area that we can circle around with the Lalo because we have a very square and symmetrical base here now coming in from this angle we take a multi we take that air defense we take wizard tower queen CC if we get lucky as well we can even reach across into this area and take out potentially any of these buildings but these are a bonus guys these are an absolute bonus as long as we take out all of this which the plan with a kill squad is you can see how now we can lalo around the other end of the base like i said if we came in with a queen charge we'd have had to be very careful in terms of protecting the healers from the air defense and the multi and essentially don't complicate it this base is very symmetrical you can come in from any different angle but this one was chose to include the multi take out the queen the cc and again anything past this point is a bonus you can see that the valks come down to this area and guys we are actually going to hit this wizard tower to take that out huge bonus for the lava loon but in comes that strategy now if you are new to the channel guys be sure to subscribe for all of my clash of clans videos and turn on the notification bell so you do not miss out now look at the sweeper we did have to come into that a little bit but we came straight into the multi inferno that is huge try and circle around the splash damage initially look at the back end of the base here zero splash damage that is when you your balloons are going to clump so if you can hit the splash damage first so that you don't then clump your loons together because with the best will in the world you've heard it here a million times they will bunch up towards the end and you've got to have a plan for it obviously the kill squad in that of the minions uh the cleanup team sorry are around the outside there helping out and a lot of balloons essentially lost towards the end of the base there imagine if there was a splash damage there but again kept it simple took out that area which was more than appropriate for this base to then allow the Lalo around the back and again very simple way of doing it it's not that a queen charge couldn't work you just have to take them other things into uh, consideration as well but let's move on to the next variation alrighty guys on to the next one 
and it's one of my favorite the electron strategy now guys all of these attacks are by toxic rabbits and if you are interested in joining us here be sure to join my discord server all of my social media platforms are linked down below and you'll find everything you need for joining toxic rabbits right the electron strategy then let's pause for a second again we've started creating the funnel here and we're going to send the slammer onto this multi inferno now again Again, let's have a look at it in terms of the traditional kill squad let's compare to what we've just shown you we've got to take the queen and the cc now in terms of coming into the base with let's say the wrecker we'd have to come in from probably an angle down here to get any kind of significant value we could use the slammer but in order to get through some of the walls we'd have to come in from them angles we'd be missing inferno towers and it's just there's no area of the base where there's massive value or also think about a queen charge look the multi infernos again very strategically placed in order to attack healers on the outside if you're not careful so you'd have to be able to charge into an area where you could get that however look at the electron remember with the electron you're trying to take down a multi inferno the queen and carve out an area of the base now look at this as we use the sui heroes to take out this area we get that air defense but we also take out them uh, defenses on the inside meaning that we can target the multi straight away now whilst you might not pop your loons and clone them on top of there because it's then harder to hit these buildings if you can directly target it with the slammer you can get that down and we can actually get the slammer into this region before we ever clone it so then look at how tightly compact these little sets of defenses are we can make a huge impact here so here it is guys slammer takes it out moves on forward we've got that poison spell ready rage spell ready clone spell ready bump now look at them loons they can spread onto them defenses the e-drag gets incredible chain value we've got the queen down there wow now look at it in terms of what we've cracked for this base and this e-drag isn't done yet guys watch this bam 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 takes all of them buildings down let's pause as the lalo now comes in we've actually now just got this area if we draw here yep where now we can send the Lalo down here, whereas before it would have been incredibly hard to crack that base. Also think about trash buildings on the inside. There's only now these two, whereas the previous one, if we did Electron, be sure to rewind back if you want to see that. If we'd use the Electron, there's a lot of trash buildings on the inside, but the Kill Squad indeed took that out. Now this is massively important, guys. Look at these loons coming in to these defenses. This base is designed to do that. The multi here by itself had you not have taken out these defenses on the outside it would be harder to get our big pack of loons onto this look at the wide angle that that multi can hit amazing stuff but beautifully timed here takes out them defenses and we literally surround this multi from each and every angle we had the heal spell there to boost the balloons up as well remember if you are clumping the balloons and it's over a splash damage you might want to consider that heal spell because it can be very valuable for your loons they can go down incredibly quick to the splash damage and again look at it at the end here beautiful stuff as we take down that final defense we've got minions all around the base we're not going to time fail guys even had that spare loon to help with cleanup but distract a wizard tower if needed we've got one more variation for you with the lava loon before we move on to the pekka bobat okay let's show you a queen charge lava loon before we move on to the pekka bobat now guys again i am just explaining a few thoughts that i have around these attacks it's not that one is better than another or that one would not succeed over another should i say but you're really trying to pick the best one for you what do you feel most comfortable with within this base and try and narrow that down and if i've missed any tips please do share yours down in the comments
So with the queen charge for this one, let's pause again. Make sure to check out that last one. I forgot to say that the air sweepers were out of the way for the electron coming in. That's also relevant for the queen charge. You've got to take that into consideration. It's not like a be all and end all for the hero uh, healers. You can have them pushed back by the sweepers, but you've got to then think of when they do get pushed back, how much damage is my queen taking? She can take a lot of damage in them couple of seconds before the healers get back on. Now in terms of air defense, that is huge. You do not want to charge an area where you've got an air defense picking off healers at the side. So whenever you do this, you're going to be charging straight into air defense as we do here. And we actually put a jump spell, I believe, over to this left hand side somewhere in order to then try and track onto the multi. Let's see how it turns out. But essentially, again, you're looking for a couple of key aspects here. Take out a section of the base to provide pathing for your Lava Loon. Take out air defense if you're using the Queen Charge so that they're not... Or you might actually come in away from the air defense, should I say. What I meant to say was make sure that you are protecting your healers from the air defense. Obviously, if you can get air defense, that's going to help with your Lava Loon. Depending on pathing, you might, might not want to take out air defense if it's going to send your hounds across the base. Make sure you're taking note of that. But essentially, you're protecting against the multi as well and if you can take that out you've got to try and get a multi with your kill squad you do not want to be hitting two multis however again think about the slammer if you can strip away defenses in front of a multi you can get the slammer onto it and it's incredibly powerful it is going to take that out now on this attack Ali got a little bit unfortunate with the healers they started at the beginning of the attack going all over it means his queen didn't quite get that multi but again have a plan for that in terms of your Lalo and he's got the haste spells here. Look, one wizard tower, two wizard towers, and a multi at the end. Not an ideal place to be coming into. He planned to take out these two buildings, but he's got that couple of loons to distract this wizard tower, and he's got the haste spell. Knows he's going to need it for these splash damage buildings. So that's a couple of variations of Lava Loon. We'll now move to the Pekka Bobat. It's incredible. You guys know that strategy. It works at Town Hall 10, and it's incredibly good at Town Hall 10, but when will you use just the peckers and bowlers? When would you integrate the bats? Now, one final thing on this attack, all of the kill squads you've seen, it doesn't have to be Lalo for the end. You've got to think about where the air defense are positioned, where the sweepers are positioned, where the defenses are. Can you control the balloons effectively? Or would it be better to use hog riders or miners? You can select one kill squad and merge it into whatever attack based on the design but let's move on to the pekka bobat Okay, we have It's Dave getting it done here with the Pekka Bobat. It's an incredible strategy. I think it's actually the best in the game, especially at Town Hall 12, but let me know what you think down in the comments. And we're going to basically show you the two attacks here, one with the bat spells and one without. Irrespective of whether you use the bats or not, the entry into the base is the same. You've got to set up that funnel massively for the bowlers. The queen walk is an incredible way to do that. So the queen actually creates all of the funnel on this side and she's able to, with her range, reach across to these buildings, which helps create a better funnel for the bowlers. The king and a couple of wizards did a good job down on the bottom here. So we've got the funnel either side for our troops to come in. Wrecker is able to come from the opposite side of the base in order to punch straight of the way through. Now look at the base in terms of when we may or may not use back. So you've figured out that we're coming in with the peckers and bowlers. We've got single target inferno here and here. That's good news for bats. But if we pause for a second, we've got this little area here where we've got the clan castle, the queen, two wizard towers. Clearly, that's not an area you want the bats to hit. So you've got to think of if we take this out... Can we then use the bats? We've got one wizard tower. That's it in terms of splash damage. And what we will have is this tiny little area for the bats to move around. If we draw around the defenses there, we've got this little path 
for the bats to take. That's exactly what you need to look for. With the Pekka Ball Bat and with the bat spells, you want them to work as a huge group. You want them to one-shot defenses. You don't want them hovering around, taking their time. You want them to just bang one defense down to the next. Bang, take that one down. You want them to move very easily through a thin strip defenses so they don't just split off everywhere and become inefficient. Don't get me wrong, you can use that technique, but that's more of a bad bomb where you're trying to take out an area of the base in order to create pathing for your other troops. With the Pekka Ball Bat, that's not what you're doing. You're using them to clean up the outside of the base, and as you've seen, they came right the way around. No splash damages other than that Wizard Tower, which was distracted. However, we had a freeze spell anyway, so think about that. That's when you want to use the bats. Basically, the opposite of that. If you could not do that, that's when you would not want to use the bats. But you've then got to think, is this the best strategy for the base? If you still feel you can get good value from the peckers and ballers, maybe you can use that, but you just don't need the bat spells. Let's show you an example now. Friends Melvin here, getting it done without the bat spells. So again, the entry into your base has to be the same. Now many of you, let me know in the comments if you remember my 8 times Pekka strategy which we have shown. I'll link it at the end of the video, but you've all seen it work against these diamond style bases at Town Hall 10. So there's no reason that the Pekkas and Bowlers wouldn't work here. And do we need the bats? Let's look at it. We've created that funnel beautifully with the peckers either side. Everything is going to redirect in here. Obviously, we've got good access with the wrecker straight through to the town hall. And again, if we pause for a second, what you've got to think in terms of the bats, you need a good amount of spells to actually get the bats to work. So your, your kill squad, that entry, You've got to feel like you don't need many spells in order to get that done because you need enough for the bats. However, look at all of the damage. This is an incredibly tightly compact base. You've got to have spells in this area. You can see that heal spell there. And again, if we come through into the base, you, you've got to try and think about that small area of bringing the bats in. So essentially, we've got to crack all of this with our kill squad. We've got to take all of this out, leaving these two areas at the side here, one, two, for the bats. Is there a clear way that we can draw the bats around like we did in the last attack? Probably not. Maybe you could have tried a bad bomb technique, but then again, is it worth it? Do you want to commit that many bats? Probably not. You need the spells coming into the middle here. Essentially, what Prince Melvin decides to do is take out that middle section of the base, as you've seen here with the record coming through. And then for these final two sections, he's actually got enough troops left over to finish that off. Couple of balloons to help out, but he's got the hero abilities. He's still got the peckers because the healers have kept them alive. Does get a very fortunate split at the end here, mind, with the troops going either side. But essentially, look at the loons finishing off the defenses as they are distracted on the peckers. And I feel that was a much better option. He wouldn't have had the spell space to keep the troops alive moving through the bases if he tried to integrate the bats, nor could he have got the value from the bats. So I hope that video has helped to explain a lot of that. Check out this video with eight peckers getting it done against very similar base designs. But that wraps it up for this one, guys. Until next time, peace out.